Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Um, so the Fed announced their uh, Fed hike, the rate, and uh, the market pretty much priced it was going to be 0.75, although Jerome Powell announced it'd be 0.5, but due to the hot uh, CPI number we got last week, they decided and voted on 0.75. So what does that mean to the everyday hardworking and, uh, you know, person that's just struggling every day? You know, you and me. What does that mean to us? How does that impact us? So I'm going to talk about that. And I'm also going to talk about how I'm preparing for this. It's a lot of unknowns, our future. Um, we don't know what's going to happen, but the best thing to do is to prepare for the unknown. So let's dig into it. Let's get it. Before I begin, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. It means a lot. It really helps me. It keeps me motivated to keep putting the message out and giving my views on uh, what I see happening in the industry the financial markets so like we talked about in the beginning in my intro here um, he entered he increased it to 0.75 the markets kind of priced that in and, and were anticipating that's what was going to happen and you know the Fed what they're trying to do right now is just cool the economy and right now hiking these interest rates that seems to be the biggest tool that they have to uh, combat this issue um, they're also gonna they have quantitative tightening as well and that may help. So what that means to us, it means increase um, credit card debt and other loans. They're going to be more expensive as far as the interest rate goes. Uh, for instance, the average five-year car loan rate was five, 4.53 for the week of June 14th. 30-year uh, interest rate for a fixed mortgage rate was about 5.23. You know, it's crazy to think that, you know, not too long ago, interest rate is about 2.5. Now, that same home is going to cost you that much more because of this interest rate, and it's only going to get higher. So this is data published by the Federal Reserve. It says that revolving debt is setting new records. There are two ways to look at revolving de debt, seasonally adjusted and non-seasonally adjusted. So non-revolving debt, which includes auto loans, installment loans, and student loan, was three times that amount, clocking in at $3.5 trillion, up to $20 billion from the month before. In an environment where we have 8% inflation in the U.S., expect more debt to build. The increased volume will certainly come from credit cards as consumers toil with gas and groceries, but keep an eye on installment lending as consumers consolidate debt with cheaper but climbing interest rates. Now consider savings. Here's evident that the party is over, dating back to the 1960s when Americans saved about 10% of their income. Um, now the, the, the rate is, is terribly low um, compared to that. So it just shows that with increased loans, I'm sorry, with increased uh, inflation, we're getting more credit card debt and that's depleting our savings, which is both, both, both bad things to do. So we're already seeing the signs of these, uh, these hikes as well as inflation. So I talked about this a little bit. The 30-year mortgage rate surges at 6.28, up from 5.5 a week ago. Higher home prices and rates have crushed home affordability. For instance, a $400,000 home with a 20% down payment, the monthly mortgage payment would be about $1,399. This was in January. Now, the difference is about $577 due to the rising interest rates. So that increased. So $1,399 is now $1,976. And that does not include a home that is about 20% more expensive than it was a year ago. Oh, so we got the home prices increases and now we have gas prices. You know, I don't even have to tell you if you live in the U.S. and I'm sure even in Europe, you're dealing with the, home, the gas prices. And it is crazy. It's so painful to deal with, but it's a part of life and you need your vehicle to get to work and to get to places. So if you have a family, you have to bring your kids to sporting events, whatever, fuel is very important in our lives, unless you have an electric car. So I posted this, uh, so a friend of mine, he owns a trucking company and he posted this in Mar in May. In May, and if you look what it costs to fuel, just a truck, a truck, just a regular truck, and trucks are very vital to our economy. $900, that was in May. Sorry, that was in May. So consider it now. It's even more expensive. And I bring this up because rising fuel costs impacts a lot of things, man. Um, prices of fuel, you know, just the fuel a tank. I'm sorry, a tank. I'm thinking of Russia. But the fuel a truck, boat, plane has increased dramatically. Um, and you need these, you know, to fuel the economy, like I said before. 
and diesel is even more expensive than fuel. So that also you got to consider the fuel um, needed for farming equipment. And that's what, you know, provides the food for the countries, for us, the U.S., the Europe, all over. So if the price increases for this, how do you think, where do you think it's going to end up, basically? In order for companies and farmers to make some profit, they're going to pass on that, um, the increase in prices to the consumer. They price it over to us, and what's going to happen? Prices inc increasing of the goods that we normally get to eat or whatever clothes that we need uh, because the trucks have to bring it over. The boats have to bring it over, planes have to bring it over. And once we start clutching the wallet, clutching the pocketbooks, then we say, wait a minute, you know, we have to cut back on that. Companies aren't making the profit that they used to make. What happens? They start laying off people. Um, the layoffs have been coming slow and steady, but they're coming. Um, mostly in the tech sector, but uh, let's see, C, the company there, it cuts, um, you know, due to lack of profit, they're cutting down. BlockFi. There's been a lot of uh, layoffs in the crypto market. BlockFi, Coinbase, uh, Gemini, they're, they're laying off people mainly due to the crypto market cooling off. Coinbase, like I said before, 18% of jobs cut down. Um, a fintech company, Klarna, they cut their jobs. Uh, even in real estate, I mean, with the rising interest rates and the mortgage, uh, mortgage applications have ceased a little bit, so the red hot um, you know, uh, real estate market is starting to show some cracks. So you have Redfin and Compass announcing layoffs. Back into the tech sector, you have Netflix and Meta and Uber announcing layoffs and hiring freezes. Tesla was the biggest one. They announced 10% um, staff cuts. And even one of their ex-employees confirmed on LinkedIn that, you know, he was laid off. So Deutsche Bank, they call for a recession and they're saying that it should begin next year. Although personally, I believe after this quarter ends, it'll be defined as a recession. Um, they state the global economic outlook is uncertain because of Russia's invasion of Ukraine and Chinese lockdowns potentially impacting supply chains. So I'm going to scroll down to the next U.S. recession. It says while Deutsche Bank is the first major bank to forecast an imminent economic downturn, Investors, both retail and professional, share the group's gloomy outlook. According to a Bloomberg survey conducted between March 29th and April 1st, 48% of investors expect the U.S. to fall into recession next year. Another 21% expect the downturn to happen in 2024, while 15% of the 525 respondents expect the recession to come as early as this year. So with the pandemic still lingering, the Russia invasion of Ukraine putting additional pressure on already surging consumer prices and Chinese lockdowns potentially disrupting supply chains, the economic outlook is currently clouded by uncertainties. And where there is clouds, there's often a chance of rain or in this case, recession. So Jim Bianco, a market, uh, market forecaster said, until inflation peaks and Federal Reserve stops hiking rates, market forecaster warns that we're on a one-way trip to misery. And I share that sentiment. The Fed only has one tool to bring in inflation, and all they have to slow demand is rising the interest rates. We may not like what's happening, but over the Equalities building in Washington, I don't think they're too upset with what they're seeing in the markets during the last few weeks. He uh, went on to say, you've got quantitative, one quantitative tightening coming, the biggest buyer of bond is leaving, and the Federal Reserve, you've got them intending on being very hawkish and raising rates, and that's evident with them going 0.75. He said uh, he expects it to write uh, the rates to increase by 0.75, which happened, which falls in line with Wall Street's, Wall Street's estimates. He also forecasts another 75 basis point hike in the next meeting in July. You could raise rates enough, you could butcher the economy, and you can have a full fall off the cliff if you can't have inflation go down. Um, so basically, he's uh, projecting 0.75. He already confirmed it, and he kind of predicted it for today. He's saying it's going to happen again in July, and who knows what's going to happen in um, August. If the inflation doesn't go down, it's just going to keep hiking rates, and it's just going to get worse and worse. So how can we prepare for this? I would say that the way I'm going to prepare, and I'm not a financial advisor, so I can't give you any type of advice. Um, I'm just some guy on the uh, interwebs, and I'm kind of concerned about what I see, and I'm just sharing my thoughts. You can pay down debt with high interest rates. So your credit cards that you have with the high interest rate, try to pay those down. Try to save three to six months for emergency fund, have cash on hand, um, learn a new skill or trade and get certifications at your current job to make you stand out from the other person. Because once they start hiring 
uh, freezes and they start looking at people to lay off, you know, you want to stand out from the rest of the crowd. Um, diversify your investments, you know, get into Bitcoin, get into gold, precious metals, high dividend stocks, um, gardening. You know, it's a good hobby. It's actually kind of um, you can meditate. It's kind of stress relieving for real. Um, but it's also good for your health and you're just growing your own food in the event there is any type of food shortage. At least, you know, you have something you have a reserve at your home that you don't have to rely on supermarkets or anything like that. Um, also, canned goods, you know, just stock up on that type of stuff. Lastly, building a community. When I talk about community, I mean, you know, um, I could be introverted at times. I come home from work. I go into my garage and then before I even get out the car, turn the car off, put the uh, garage uh, door down and, you know, you know, in these type of times, you, you probably want to get out and meet your neighbors, know who lives around you, you know, build some type of relationship so that if things really do hit the fan, you know, you have someone you can rely on and they can rely on you as well. So that's what I mean by build a community. So, guys, um, you know, I wish I had happier news, but, you know, it's good to prepare for the unknown, you know, rather to be prepared and, and face whatever is coming our way. So, guys, um, thank you for your time. Hit that like button if you like everything you just heard. Subscribe to the channel. Um, and again, I'm just pointing out information about what I see in the markets. And I appreciate you guys. Have a good night and stay safe out there.